East, farther Eastern Europe or far Eastern Europe, and here I'll just focus on two countries, Ukraine and Russia. I would go reduce Ukraine and underweight Ukraine. You know, in other words, I'm not, I'm bearish on Ukraine. Reason is very simple. There is no diversification in the Ukrainian economy. 30% of the Ukrainian GDP comes from two major sectors. Heavy industrial stuff, it's basically Dnipropetrovsk region, and the refineries, and the chemicals. Both of those sectors are completely hungry and not going to come back anytime soon. Both of those sectors are very heavily energy de uh, dependent, and the cost of energy in the Ukraine has gone through the roof this year, and it's going to stay there, <coughs> because of course they're dependent on Russian gas. There is no diversification in the Ukraine in terms of energy supply. So that's 30% of the economy, which is an, not just dull drama, but it's a structural problem. Political problems are massive in the Ukraine. The current government of the Ukraine can't govern. I mean, they can't actually sit down and have a conversation between themselves about the type of food they would like to have for breakfast. Okay? So that is not, there is no way out of that either right now on the horizon. Ukraine is dangerously close to breaching IMF conditions on a bailout package that they received last year, which would definitely put Ukraine, if that happens, into insolvency mode. Its financial system is, some people say, and I would agree with them, is very close to the default state. So Ukraine, very hard to see how opportunities will come there, with the exception of one se sector which is traditional there, agriculture. But then, of course, if you're in the European Union and you are looking for the agricultural production in the likes of outside of the European Union, you should seriously consider what is going on right now in the EU Commission in terms of the increase in the protectionist measures in agriculture. So until the European Commission goes back on those, the milk, for example, milk subsidies, export subsidies was a great example of that. You know, um, until the European Commission closes back on that and goes back into a little bit more relaxed mode in agricultural trade, it would be difficult to see where the market is going to come for, uh, for, from uh, for agricultural investments in Ukraine. I'm bullish, more bullish, sorry, not fully bullish, I'm neutral on Ireland, oh sorry, on Russia, um, but slightly more bullish on it than Ukraine would be. The reason is simple, because Russians are taking the adjustments, the devaluation, and again, I like devaluations, notice, okay? I like devaluations because what they do is they restore competitiveness for the exporting sectors. There are other ways of restoring their competitiveness, but those are slower and more structural. Devaluation is much faster as well. Um, the interest rates adjustments are also going on, and I think they will continue. Devaluation in Russia is going to continue as well, but not by much. There's not a hell of a lot more for ruble to fall. I think maybe another 10%, you know, hopefully. That is assuming, of course, there is no default type of situation. But I don't see default coming out in Russia. I'll tell you why. In Ukraine, there is a large mismatch between the short-term debt by the companies and the government and the long-term debt. And the government debt is very heavy there in Ukraine as well. In Russia, it's about 540 billion in debt, but more than 90% of that stuff is corporate debt. So oligarchs, okay? Now, oligarchs are gonna go under. That's the great news for Russia. Why? Because that opens up competition in the sectors which were traditionally dominated by them. Energy, telecoms, and the likes, okay? Now, that's great opportunity for investment. If that, when that starts happening, businesses should be going into Russia and looking for a strategically, obviously, balanced and careful, well-researched investment as well. Um, so, Finance, also problematic in Russia, but less than in the Ukraine. Probably on the margin, the Russian banks are much more sound as well. There is another interesting issue that I mentioned, which I didn't mention, which rely, relates to the Eastern Europe as much as to the far, what I call Far Eastern Europe. And that's the role played by the foreign banks in domestic operations. Um, and that's important because from that point of view, like Russians are a bit more healthier than the Ukrainians. And there are parts of pockets of Eastern Europe where things are more, much more healthier. The Baltics are, in particular, much healthier than, for example, Hungary or um, 